I like a superhero with depth. I like it when superpowers are more than just super. Like when turning into a literal ice man turns you into a literal explosion. The mutant known as Iceman is famous for his control over frozen water, seemingly able to generate ice right out of thin air. He's probably rapidly condensing water vapor. Anyway, he's like the Mr. Freeze of mutants. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Wait, why did I never notice this is so wrong? The Ice Age didn't kill the dinosaurs. No, Mr. Freeze, I ban you forever. Goodbye. Cool party. <laughs> Iceman works by freezing everything, even himself. But although we see things like snow and steam all the time, I don't think we really comprehend how much energy has to enter or leave a system for water to change phases. Thankfully, that's what I'm here for. Water has a high specific heat, which is the amount of energy that you need to input into a certain amount of mass to raise it by one degree Celsius. Water has a higher specific heat than just about any other common substance on the planet, requiring just over four joules per gram of water to raise it just one degree. This value means that it takes a lot of energy to raise water's temperature, or that a lot of energy needs to leave water for it to cool down. This is why, despite the fact that the sun is always beating down on it, that the Earth's oceans don't change temperatures rapidly. It's very gradual, and it's always too cold to go in, Mom! The specific heat of water turns Iceman into a fireball. If the average human is mostly water at 98.6 degrees, Fahrenheit, that means that the average person needs to lose a lot of energy to cool down to Iceman temperatures. But how much energy? Some nerdy students at the University of Leicester actually calculated this. Link in the show notes. Iceman cools all the way down to negative 76 degrees Celsius when he goes full icicle. He has a starting body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius when he's just normal, uh, non-ice man and he has a mass of 65.8 kilograms. And we can use specific heat to find out how much energy has to leave Iceman's body for him to become Iceman with this equation, with Q being the amount of heat that moves around, M mass C specific heat, and delta T as change in temperature. But since Iceman cooled down past the freezing point of water, we need two more values that we can easily look up. The first, bear with me, this is a little scrunch, but you'll understand it in a second, is the specific heat of ice, like the specific heat of water, and what's called the latent heat of fusion, which is an amount of energy that just gives water an extra little bit of kick for the molecules to rearrange themselves into ice. So we can plug all of our values into this final equation, Iceman's mass, the specific heat of water, the temperature of his body, the specific specific heat of ice, the temperature that that ice gets to, and the latent heat of fusion to get five megajoules of energy. That's a lot. When Iceman becomes a popsicle, he lets out the same amount of energy as a kilogram of TNT. But it gets worse. The students also calculated that all this energy would leave Iceman kind of like uh, an explosion. And if you were within a meter of, or two of Iceman, it would be like experiencing a heat shock wave of 41,000 Kelvin, or yeah, eight times hotter than the surface of the sun. It would look kind of like this. I mean, it would look kind of like this. Ooh, yeah. Now that is a superpower with side effects. Iceman wouldn't be able to transform around anybody that he loved or any building that he didn't want to see uh, burn to the ground. And isn't that way more fun to think about than some dude creating ice roses on a desk for a girl that he liked? Duh, cause science. My producers want me to fill this CTA with about 20 to 30 seconds of additional science content. So how about this? Sharks are older than trees evolutionarily.
There's one more thing that, about Iceman that confuses me. In the comics, he's always depicted, right, kind of, he's creating ice, but then he's also surfing on it. He's creating this huge, uh, like, like skateboard ramp of ice as he goes along, this wave. But if you were actually generating and jettisoning from your hands enough ice to make a wave, it would effectively be uh, a rocket. You're th if you throw mass down away from you, it propels you upwards. That's what our rockets do with superheated gas. It's not pushing off of the ground, it's throwing mass out of itself and moving upwards. So if Iceman is doing that with ice, he would be just an ice rocket man with no need for any waves or surfing or anything like that. But I guess it doesn't look as cool. It's it's cool to me.